Hi everyone and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Here at Truck King we still think of luxury pickup trucks as kind of a new phenomenon but the truth is that they've been around for a while now. This truck right here beside me is the 10th anniversary edition of the Ram Longhorn. Yes that is the cowboy themed luxury package and for this year 2021 they've really gone all out on this truck. So in this video we'll take you for a full tour of this rig which costs almost a hundred grand then we're going to hook up a trailer to the back haul some payload and find out if this expensive luxury truck can still do real work Let's start with the walk around. So if you go for this 10th anniversary edition, you're gonna be getting the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 as standard, but the e-torque system is optional and we have it today. So this engine as it sits puts out 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque. And that e-torque system Ram says it will supply a supplemental 130 pound feet, although just for little tiny short bursts. So I mentioned it, this is the 10th anniversary edition. It's also a limited Longhorn. This is a top of the line 1500 and it looks like it. It's covered in chrome on the grill, on the bumper. You're getting those chrome mirror caps up there. And then when it's not chrome, everything else is nicely body color. Now, as part of the package, it's kind of funny to me, we do get a set of Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. I don't know why exactly you need ATs on a luxury truck, but it does make it look a little bit better. Maybe that's the reason right there. And they are wrapped around 20 inch wheels. Now let's come around the back end of this truck. So you'll see this does have the Ram split tailgate and that is also something that comes along with the 10th anniversary package. So that means you can use it as a regular tailgate and yes, it is damped. Or if you grab this lower handle, it will split open for you like this. Now I wanna show you another pretty cool accessory we have here today. Ram actually designed this bed step specifically for this split tailgate. Once your tailgate's open, you got the step down there. It's actually really easy to step right up in and out of this bed. So I like this idea, but it's kind of funny because once you close this and open it up as a normal tailgate, that step is now totally useless. So it is a pretty specific uh, usage case for it. But I guess you could also say it's nice of them to design something for this split tailgate specifically. And you just boot it back in like that. Hi folks, we have teamed up with Charity Stars to bring you the chance to win a brand new 2021 Ram 1500 TRX plus $10,000 cash. All you have to do is head over to charitystars.com slash trucking. I'll put that link down in the description as well. And you can enter to win this insane super truck. We did review it here on the channel. We had a lot of fun with it out there in the snow. Now the numbers really tell the whole story here. 702 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque, over 11 inches of ground clearance, 35 inch tires, this TRX is an absolute monster and it'll make the run from zero to 60 in just four and a half seconds. Oh, and did I mention it sounds incredible? So if you want the chance to win, head over to charitystars.com slash truck king and maybe best of all, some of the proceeds will go to charity, in this case, globalgiving.org. I also want to quickly show you guys the Ram boxes. Now these are nothing new, but they have been updated over the years. Even the mechanism here is different. Now it is just a little push button to open those up and they're on nice gas assist shocks. Now once you get it open, it's quite a big space in here for all kinds of stuff. I like that there are drain holes. So if it does get wet or if you fill it up with ice for drinks, you can just pop those out of here. And yes, there is a plug up here too. So if you want to be charging something in here or just running your uh, fun accessories while you're back here, you can do that and there's LED lighting in here. And I love that it's actually really smart. They're up here, so when you open the Ram box, they're illuminating straight down onto whatever you're working on. So if you're coming in here at night, you can see it as well. And then maybe best of all, once you close it and you lock your truck with your key fob, these lock too. So besides the fact that they eat up some of your bed width, the Ram boxes here are a really smart storage solution. 
Now it's time to talk towing and payload, and we'll start with payload. Now, why do we call them half-ton trucks? Well, because back in the day, a half-ton truck could carry a half a ton, 1,000 pounds. And I hate to say it, but this Ram here today, it's not a half-ton truck. The payload number on this sticker down here, 973 pounds. Now, of course, it's fully loaded, and that means that all of this gear subtracts from your payload number. So if you're wondering what it'll tow, well, let's ho head over to Ram's handy-dandy VIN lookup and uh, take a peek. Folks, it is payload time. So we've got our 500 pound barrel back there in the bed. And once again, another video, another truck where we have to complain about the payload. Under a thousand pounds in a half ton truck is, is depressing. With that barrel back here and us up here, we're overloading this truck. No, it doesn't feel like it, but it is the truth. And uh, just so you guys know, so you're in the loop, we reached out to Toyota and we're trying to get an interview together with an engineer so we can really talk about payload numbers. And now that invitation is going out to Ram as well. We wanna sit down with these people and discuss payload in depth and really find out the true story here because once again, less than a thousand pounds just really sucks. But yeah. you're driving, what do you feel? Well, I was gonna also say, I was gonna say, frankly, I got a feeling that each company has their own methodology when it comes to figuring out this so frankly we're going to do this with ram right now but you know what this this is also going out to ford it's also going out to gm uh, nissan for that matter honda we want to know how y'all come up with your payload numbers so that we can understand this better so you've heard that rant before but now it's out of the way so once again what do you actually feel from behind the wheel dad and if i can make one observation quickly we have the airbag suspension here, and with steel suspension, with springs in the rear end, once you put weight on, trucks generally get a little softer, but it's not the exact same experience with airbags. I find that when you put the airbags on, I don't want to say stiffer, but I just feel more coming out of the rear end. I just feel everything the truck is doing. There's more uh, input coming back into my hands, maybe touchier, twitchier. I don't know if you feel that, but that sort of was my impression driving it. Well, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, we're, we're not dealing with any sag. Um, the other thing with airbags and, and is that you would think that you'd get more wash because you're basically sitting on a rubber bag mm -hmm. filled with air. But that's actually not the case. True. The side to side is actually quite stiff and there's no roll. And, you know, to your point, uh, because it's self-leveling, it's constantly looking for its own level. Uh, you, you're not dealing, like I say, with any kind of sag, which means that uh, there's there's no push to the front of the vehicle, there's no lift, and you feel nothing on the steering. So, I mean, ideally, I love air suspension. Mm -hmm. No, it straight does do, up, it does do a great job. The self leveling is beautiful, and it also means that I can't measure the squat today like I normally do because there's no point. I'm just gonna we put the weight back there, and the truck will find its level once again. Um, and that's also going to be nice once we hook the trailer up. Yeah, that's nice for towing. So now we'll pivot away from the payload, which is probably the weakest point on this truck, to what has to be the strongest point on this truck, the interior. So not only is this a limited Longhorn, so it's already loaded up, but it's the 10th anniversary edition. So if you get this special package, you're also going to get a unique interior, which is even nicer than the standard interior. The materials are beautiful. The wood is nice. The leather is nice. There's this kind of really cool, um, you know, beaten metal, knurled metal, which is all the along the edge of your center stack here. Ram just absolutely kills it with interiors. Um, and this one's no different. I don't know, I, I got nothing else to say besides it's beautiful. Details, details. That's what this particular interior excels at is tiny, tiny attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I've driven this for several days now and I keep seeing things for the first time. Mm -hmm little things like around the the instrument bezels there's like an engraving very slight very small but beautiful looks like hieroglyphics and you know for for somebody to come along a designer and say I'm gonna spend the time to not only 
create that, but then find a way to manufacture it and incorporate it into the design, you got to give them props all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yes, even the seats. I love the face of the seats because you get this nice blend of the kind of suede with the leather and the piping. And then the back of the seats, you get those cool belt buckles for the uh, rear seat pouches. So like you just said, more fun details. Okay, time to now pick up our trailer. So we throw it in reverse and you can see the camera system here. And having been in the new F-150 a bunch now, I will complain once again, this is a 12 inch screen, but the camera only uses the top little section. Why not use that whole screen and offer me more of a view? So now I'm gonna go ahead and back into my trailer. And you will see that once I get close, I'm able to zoom in you do have a couple different views here that's what i was looking for i am pretty offline so once i get close i don't know if i can save it boom i think i saved it and there we are all right now we can see what it does while it's towing improvements on this truck uh, both of which were actually introduced on the TRX last fall are the rear view camera display and a head up display both of which are really nice additions um, it doesn't feel very exciting only because uh, Ram is playing catch up other guys have already got these the rear view camera is certainly handy in terms of uh, having a view out the back when you've got stuff in the bed that would normally block your your uh, your rear view mirror because uh, the camera's much higher it sits up in the chimsel and head up i love head up it gives you a lot of information you don't have to take your eyes off the road uh there's a reason why fighter pilots use it so nice to see yeah you guys saw it earlier when I showed you that VIN lookup tool. This truck as it sits is only rated to pull 7,773 pounds. So we're basically loading it right to max. And before we talk about how it feels, I just want to point out something that's gone on in the world of trucks over the last you know, decade at least. The more expensive a truck gets, you have this inclination to believe it's going to be more capable. But that's actually the opposite of the truth. The more expensive a truck gets these days, that means there's more interior appointments being added and more creature comforts, and those all decrease from your capability. So this Ram is very expensive, we'll get to the price soon, but it can only tow, you know, not even 8,000 pounds and not even 1,000 pounds of payload. So just again, if, if you're really out here hunting for big numbers from a pickup truck, do not look at the top of the line version. Go way down the trim level and you'll find some bigger numbers. Um, all that said though, Dad, like always, you're driving and we do have a big V8 up here, so it's not like we don't have power. So what do you feel? How does the trailer feel back there? Well, first off, this is the, strangely enough, the first time we've had a 5.7. On the channel, yeah. Uh, on the channel. And of course, that's uh, an older engine now, but certainly powerful and torquey. It's pulling 7,000 pounds. I'm not even a quarter of the way into the throttle. Uh, as far as inputs are concerned, um, I'm sure when we get to the uh, zero to 60, we're going to lay some rubber because this this motor certainly pulls and works nicely with the tranny. The eight-speed shifts seamlessly; you don't feel anything at all. The e-torque also smooths things out. That's really what it's all about, as opposed to adding a lot of power. So. It's a beautiful package, very competent. Um, I'm real happy with it. And the last thing I'm going to say, and sadly I keep saying this over and over, is it feels like it'll handle more weight. Okay, now it's time for zero to 60. We've got the truck in tow haul mode, and we've got it in two wheel drive. We're going to see if we can get the best takeoff possible. And no, no, come on, phone. Ready for the race, hit it. It felt good. I thought we'd have got a rubber. I thought it might have spun too.
And there's a hundred. Not bad. That was a 15.7 to 100 kilometers an hour. And now you can see how that stacks up on our leaderboard. So we're towing the trailer. We just ran 33.9 kilometers and that is 16.1 liters per 100, which for the trailer seems pretty decent actually. And now we can switch over the units here in the center. US, and you can see that that is 14.6 MPG over just over 21 miles. So now this all leads us into what does it cost? So this truck, as you see it here today, has a base MSRP of about $74,000, but it has 20 grand worth of options. So yes, this truck is $94,000 Canadian. That's expensive, man. Um, I think we all know you're probably not gonna pay MSRP. Although these days, that might not be true because of the truck shortage. You know, trucks are in high demand and there's low supply. So I really can't say that for sure. Um, I don't know, Dad, anything to say about it besides it's really expensive? Well, we're telling you what it costs. But, you know, I had a thought, which is that there's a real skew today. Guys are buying trucks based on whether they can afford the payment bi-weekly. And in a lot of cases, you know yourself, when you look at the advertisements, you don't even see the price of the truck. All you see is, well, that every two weeks it's gonna cost you $3.99 or something. And so a guy goes, okay, well, I can afford that. And he's okay with the fact that he's never actually gonna own this truck. He's gonna have it for a few years, trade it in, pick up another truck, continue to pay so in actual fact it seems like we're entering an age where guys are okay with renting yeah. their vehicles borrow it from the bank basically right? literally well folks we are coming to the end of this one and that's exciting because we're going to use that ram to go launch these yamaha wave runners right now and look at this thing it is gorgeous now if you want to see a full review on these make sure you come back to the channel real soon now, as for this Ram here, yes, it's quite expensive, but I have to tell you that I think this is the nicest interior in a pickup truck, period. Of course, that is subjective though. So I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about this 10th anniversary Ram? As always, go below, leave us that comment. Let me know while you're down there. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of the Truck King channel, and then come right back here to see what we are testing next. And I can already tell you, it's those sweet Wave Runners right back there. See ya.